Hello everyone, this is a video on how to blow away the multi uh, Zyxel Multi M1 operating system on these Multi M1 devices and put on OpenWRT, uh, at which point you can use this as an access point or a router. And um, the reason I'm doing this is I've deployed probably about 10 sets of these and in the beginning they were okay, um, but I'm going to say I've probably had about a 50 or 60% uh, rate of uselessness with them where I will leave them so I'll set them up as normal through the app or through the um, you know the videos that I've made on how to set them up and then I will leave and 24 hours later or a week later or whatever one of the points has gone red and won't reconnect or one of them goes red and then goes blue and then goes red and then goes blue or green or whatever it's supposed to do um, and they are just not reliable and, and cannot be trusted. Um, I made a joke the other day that the name Multi uh, is because you have to visit multiple times to get the setup to actually work. Um, and as I say, I've, I've given up and there's no way that I can deploy more of these. And the ones that I have deployed, um, when they go wrong, I'll be replacing them with something that isn't the uh, Zyxel Multi mesh system. But what these probably are uh, are competent routing devices when they are not running these IXL software. So OpenWRT is available for these routers and um, here is how you install it on them. Uh, Google for WM20 uh, or WSM20, I've got the, the model number wrong here, um, for the multi M ones and you get the OpenWRT wiki and it basically does talk you through it, but just in case you want a video on how to do it, here is how you do it. And also just shows you what the lights will do on the front of the devices and everything. Um, this is in factory reset mode, so uh, it was in a, a set being used, and when I plugged it in, it was red because the, the rest of the set isn't here uh, and it can't be used. So I've then factory reset it using the pin at the back. I have a video which will be in the, uh, linked in the description if you want to know how to factory reset it. Uh, super easy, you just put a pin in the back until the light starts flashing. Um, back to the wiki page. You want to download the oh, wrong table, it's the further down the page, installation section. Um, we first want to download the OpenWRT upgrade, which is the sysupgrade dot bin file and we also want to download the openwrt install so that's those two files downloaded and now I want to plug in with a network cable into the multi I want to turn off Wi-Fi on my device And hopefully, I'll have been given an IP address. Ah, I won't have been given an IP address because I'm on a static IP configuration at the moment. So let's quickly sort that out. Yeah, there we go. I've been given an IP address by the multi, and I should be able to visit that web page. Um, but as per the instructions further down here, there's a specific page, hidden page you need to go to, um, called slash GUI forward slash hash forward slash main forward slash debug forward slash firmware upgrade. The first time you access this page after factory resetting the multi, you will be redirected to a first time setup wizard. So let's uh, see if we can get, catch this happening. That is normal and you just ignore it, close that page and then load this page again. What you then get is the firmware upgrade page with a spinner. This is now asking, or the, the browser is now asking the multi for some information and the multi is taking a very long time to respond.
there we go if you get that and you get a spinner and if it takes even longer than that that's actually quite normal so just be aware that it does take a while to load this firmware upgrade page before you can then select any of the stuff on the page so we need to click on the upload file box go to the downloads folder and the first file we want to upload is the smaller of the two files called initram fs kernel dot bin so I've pressed on that it says do you want to confirm uploading the file I shall press OK So I've clicked on uh, the firmware file, it's sent it, we've got about two minutes left on the countdown timer on my screen and the light on the multi is now uh, rapidly flashing kind of light blue on to my eyes but on the um, video it looks like kind of purple, uh, I guess. And at this point, it's definitely not responding to pings. And I suspect I'll have been given a different IP address. Or no IP address at the moment. This light's now gone solid, kind of white, as far as I can tell. Let me, uh, yes, it's solid white, but again, on the uh, video, it looks more purpley, but uh, it's solid white. I do now finally have an IP address of 192.168.1.184 and a default gateway of 1.1, which will now be the router running the upgrade image. So 192.168.1.1, and we have OpenWRT, but be aware that this is not how you want to leave it because it's probably not going to save settings it doesn't have the partition set up on its storage and other things so uh, we need to log in with root and the password root and in fact it even warns you here that it's running in recovery mode um, settings will be lost etc so we now need to go to the firmware upgrade option and scroll down flash new firmware image and at this point we go to browse and we select the larger of the two files which is called squashfs sysupgrade.bin and then upload that sent the file to the multi uh, we do not want to keep settings and re retain the current configuration because there, there's no configuration there and just in case that initial image has some weird settings in it we don't want to uh, to keep those and continue. It's now blinking red and we'll reboot into the final version of the operating system. finished flashing, it's rebooted now so it stopped responding to pings on my laptop. Rapidly blinking white, which as I say on the video looks like purple. At this point, if this video has been helpful to you, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have the notifications switched on, but the subscriber numbers really are helpful. Right, at this point I will plug in the WAN port, because we're running a sensible operating system. The 
WAN port is plugged in, I can also now ping the Maltese IP address. And I can also ping the internet by default. If you've got a PPPoE ISP or whatever, then you would need to configure that within the admin interface. So let's log in again, root and root. I was asking me to set a default password, but, uh, or change the default password, which I can do later. And network and interfaces, this is where we would change the WAN settings, so I'm just on DHCP. But yeah, if you're using, say, for example, BT in the UK, you'd need to edit that and change it to PPPoE, click on switch protocol, and then fill in your uh, authentication details. For wireless settings, go to network and then wireless. What you have in here is the physical layer of the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz, and then the virtual layer. So you can have multiple SSIDs. This is the first SSID on the 2.4 gigahertz, and this is the second SSID on the 5 gigahertz. You would click on edit and fill in your SSID down here and uh, under security the kind of encryption or password that you would like and then click on save and then uh, you would then enable that and that would enable just the 2.4 you'd also need to make that exact same change um, or edit in the uh, 5 gigahertz section as well um, especially making note if you want to keep the same SSID for 2.4 and 5 gigahertz or whether you wanted separate SSID so you knew which one you were connecting to and then once again, once you've made those changes, you then need to click on Enable uh, there to, to start that. The other thing you may wish to enable is under Network, Firewall, scroll down and tick Software Flow Offloading and probably tick Hardware Flow Offloading. I have had a bug on a slightly more modern version of this hardware platform where doing the hardware offloading after about a day or so uh, a persistent TCP connection would get dropped so I had to turn off the uh, hardware flow offloading but for most people leaving that switched on is probably good and will give you a performance increase. As I say you, you do want to enable that because it will keep the CPU use on the router low and uh, give you quicker speeds as well. Yeah, Just enabling software off offloading makes a massive difference and there we go, that's basically how to install OpenWRT on this uh, Zyxel Multi-M1 device. Hopefully it's been helpful to you. If it has, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have video notifications switched on, but the subscriber numbers really do help. Thank you very much.